at the risk of arming Eli for yet more old jokes, I want to offer up a back-in-my-day anecdote. My wife and I bought our first car in 1997, and back then, a gallon of gas cost about 80 cents. Now, to be fair, the summer of 97 saw crazy low gas prices, even by the standard of the time. So that wasn't exactly typical. But for the first couple of years we owned that car, we could fill it up and get change from a $10 bill. Now, back then, it was a much more trusting time, and most gas stations didn't have pay at the pump. So as hopefully at least most of you remember, the standard operating procedure was to pump your gas, then go into the gas station and pay for it. And I'm the kind of guy that rarely lets his car drop below a quarter of a tank. So when I filled up, it was generally costing me around seven bucks or less. And once I realized that, that very quickly morphed into me pretty much always getting exactly $6.66 worth of gas. Now, I, I should point out that at that time, I wasn't trying to make a religious statement when I did it, right? I, I wasn't doing it to fuck with Christians any more than I was doing it to pledge my commitment to Satan. It just seemed funny to me and on occasion to the cashier I was paying. But if there had been another equally clever amount of gas to get that was near $7, I might have just as well gone with that. Now, back then, we were living in Illinois, and most of the time, if the cashier reacted at all, it was with a, I see what you did there chuckle, and that was kind of funny. And every once in a blue moon, it was an old lady with a cross around her neck giving me a stern look over her glasses, and then it was fucking hilarious. But most of the time, nobody reacted at all. And then I moved to Georgia. Now, I'd lived in Georgia before, so it wasn't exactly a surprise that they didn't take my clever number joke quite the same as the fine folks of the Midwest. But this was before I had a productive outlet for my assholery, so I was kind of looking forward to pissing off more old Christian ladies. That bit came as no surprise. I was anticipating this bit. What I had not anticipated, however, were the cashiers who would express genuine concern for my soul. They weren't glaring at me. They weren't preaching at me about the importance of respecting religion. They were just certain that I accidentally let the pump stop on the devil's number and would, with the most sincere consideration, ask me if I wasn't sure I didn't want to add a spicy beef stick or something so as not to pay in the devil's amount. They weren't taking it as disrespectful or funny or stupid. They were taking it as dangerous. Now, crawl around in that headspace for a second, right? I mean... These are presumably at least moderately intelligent people. They, they, they made it to work today. They're trusted with money. Their pants and shirts are on the proper part of their bodies. Can't get there if you haven't at least demonstrated a passing familiarity with cause and effect. And yet here they were standing across from me, actually believing that an arbitrary valuation of a particular volume of gasoline was going to have cosmic consequences in my life. I mean, set aside how that would work from a scientific basis. I can't even get my head around how it works from a theological basis. Satan's just got somebody stationed at every cash register waiting for that number to come up. A demon standing at the pump, stops on 666, he gets all excited, then the dude tops it off. Oh, man. Keep in mind, all the Bible says about this is that the number of the beast will be 666. That's it. There's no passage in Revelations that says... And behold, he did purchase fuel in the amount of the beast number, and verily did the shit get real. There's nothing in the book that says you should avoid that number, or that it's a bad omen, or that it expresses, like, some satanic jeopardy. And yet on several occasions, I encountered people who implored me, for the sake of my eternal soul, to add a spicy beef stick to my purchase so as not to anger God. Now, if I could have taken any of these people aside and asked them how they think this works, I doubt it would have elucidated much. My guess is that the questions that seemed inescapably obvious to me are ones that they've never really pondered. I'm betting that 666 equals evil is the full extent of their philosophical reflections on the subject, but I'm dying to know how this plays out in the eternal struggle between good and evil. Is, is some kind of like Ghostbusters siren going off in hell when I got my receipt? Janine going, we got one! Or, or, or is it just St. Peter making an angry mark in a book somewhere with a note next to it saying, he was even asked to buy a spicy beef stick and refused? Now, to be fair to all my concerned cashiers, it's probably not that like this kind of stuff never occurred to them. It's just that they're not allowed to ask those questions, right? I, it's not like this is that one unique aspect of religious belief that doesn't stand up the logical scrutiny. If you start asking why and how on religious stuff, it all falls apart. So the round hole of their logic is more or less acclimated to the square peg of their beliefs. Their beliefs are divided up into things that have to make sense logically and religious stuff. And as much as possible, they keep those things separate. But alas, non-overlapping magisteria is every bit the myth that Christ the Redeemer is. So inevitably, the senseless part of their worldview must intrude on the logical parts that keeps the pants on the bottom and the shirt on the top. And this can lead to all kinds of problems that are way more impactful than an improperly motivated upsell of the spicy beef sticks. 
It's precisely this phenomenon that overrides that logical killing innocent people makes me the bad guy stuff too, after all. You know, look, faith is an inherently dangerous thing and atheists more or less universally recognize this, but it's important that we temper that with the fact that this is a tiered proposition. Okay, accepting scientific facts on faith that's dangerous. You shouldn't do that. You're right. It inhibits your ability to contribute to new knowledge. It diminishes your appreciation for how we know what we know. It dampens your curiosity, that kind of shit. Having faith in a book that says gay people and women who have premarital sex should be murdered by angry mobs lopping rocks is way fucking worse, right? Having faith in something that doesn't even make sense internally cripples one's ability to make sense of the real world. So yes, the faith thing is part of the problem, sure, but the wrong thing is a way bigger part.